into Jewish history because I continue to keep my religion and fight assimilation just like Jews did during the times of the Holocaust and the Crusades. Even though they were persecuted and their life was at stake, they still continued to fight for their religion and keep Jewish practices even though it was so hard. And when I continue to keep those practices that they did, then I'm keeping the religion that they fought for alive. And when I keep that, keep Judaism, then hopefully my kids will too, and generations after that, and then the religion will grow. My name is Allison, and when I think of Judaism, I think of my bat mitzvah, and when I got to make a speech in front of the congregation. And I was really nervous, because it was the first time I'd spoken in front of such a large amount of people. And I remember that halfway through the speech, I realized that everyone was paying like special attention to me, and that they like actually cared about what I was saying. And I realized that they gave like this special moment to all the kids in the community who were like bar bat mitzvah. And they made everybody feel like they're part of something bigger. And when I think of Judaism, I think of that special connection that we all have, because we all are a part of something. The past, I don't know, like 10 years of being at MWHA, most days I didn't really think about what it was like being Jewish, but now that I think about it, it's awesome to be part of a, a religion that experienced so many miracles and survived things that many other religions will not be able to survive. And every Shabbos we come together and it's just beautiful. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ariel Ornstein. The moment I felt most connected to Judaism was the first time I landed. It was at my bar mitzvah on November 29th, 2014. So I was learning Parsha Vayense, and I liked that Parsha because, you know, it talked about Yaakov and his sons. And my middle name is Yosef, and uh, one of his sons is Yosef, so I like that a lot. Um, so I was learning, I messed up a few times, but that just helped me expand on what I already knew, because when I messed up, they corrected me. So that shows that in life, if you mess up, they will. Uh, there's always someone that will back you up. So I'm... I didn't feel that I was actually messed up. I just felt like I needed a little bit of correction. Hi, my name is Avi Chansky. And I remember one day my brother was born, and he told me, look, Avi, let's go to Shul. And so I was like, oh, I don't want to go to Shul. I want to play on my iPod and my electronics. And so he took me, and the first day I went, everyone was just hitting me, and I was ball, and they're like, yo, Avi, you want to play? And I'm just like, I don't even know him. Like, sure. So I played, and it was a lot of fun. And after I went the first day, I started feeling like more connected, and I wanted to go more and more and more and more and more. And then, after going so much, I wanted to be like part of the Jewish community. community. And then I became part of it. Hi, I'm Aliza. And I'm Ori. And I'm Avita. And the time we most felt connected to Judaism was during camp. We were split up into two different bunks, and we all hated each other. Um, and there was this competition on Fridays to who could have the cleanest bunk on Shabbos. And our bunk had was like really good at doing themes. And our bunk was really good at cleaning. But and me. people go all out for this competition and they work really, really hard, but we were both really, really bad at it. And for three weeks of camp, we like we were at war with each other and we wouldn't let each other step into our bunks and we wouldn't talk to each other. And we, like if you told the other bunk about your theme, you were a traitor. And it was terrible. It was terrible, and we lost every week for the first three weeks of camp. And then, on the last week, we, we realized that we wouldn't win if we kept competing with each other, so we all, we all worked together to make our bugs special for Shabbat, and we all came together, and we, we felt our connection to Judaism because we realized that right then, Jews all over the world were coming together to clean for Shabbat and to prepare for Shabbat, and that right then, we were a part of the greater Jewish people all preparing for Shabbat. My name is Aiden, and uh, the most, my bar mitzvah was really uh, meaningful to me, and that's how I was connected to Judaism the most. It was very exciting when I put on tefillin, and when I got up to lane, it was very nerve-wracking because everyone was staring at me, and my bar mitzvah really motivated me in Judaism. Hi, my name is Ayala Brown. The time I feel most connected is on Shabbat, the day I get to spend time with my family and friends without technology surrounding us. This year, I have learned about the Crusades. The Jews were persecuted, which caused them to assimilate more. 
However, today, Jews in America are free to practice religion, which I feel helps me to be more connected to Judaism. Hi, I'm Batya, and when I went to Israel for the first time and saw so many different varieties of Jews, I realized that everyone has their own way of connecting. And when I saw the same historical sites I had learned about previously in school, I saw them from a different light I had seen before, and they were much more interesting. Hi, my name is Benji. I would like to talk about the time when I was four when I fell out of my brother's window. I remember my whole community decided to pray for me and have a learning session in honor of my catastrophe. Two years ago, I had multiple seizures, which caused me to realize that Hashem is always there for me and keep me a part of the greater plan that Hashem has for the Jewish people. Hello, my name is Benji Wilbur. The, the moment that I felt most connected to Judaism was probably at my bar mitzvah. Um, now, that, now that I'm bar mitzvahed, I felt that I am fulfilling all the mitzvot that my ancestors, like my grandparents and my father and my great-grandparents had. And now, um, also my grandfather was a, uh, is a Holocaust survivor, and, and he kept all the, all the mitzvot, and now I feel that I'm fulfilling them for him also. Hi, my name is Benji Zuckerman. The day before my bar mitzvah, I was thinking, what makes Judaism different from other religions? The quest to find my complicating and confusing question ended just two weeks ago. I was eating a Shabbos dinner with my family, and I realized that the Shabbos dinner is brings us all closer together. Then I kept thinking about the Jewish community in Silver Spring and how they help each other so much. Everyone came to my bar mitzvah and my special day, and that is when I finally realized what makes Judaism different. It gives us a sense of kahila, or community, that we can feel and cherish forever. My name is Chance, and I feel Judaism is special because we all share the same stories, and even if we tell them differently, or understand them, or believe in them differently, they're all the same idea. Uh, hello, my name is Donnie. Um, the first time I connected with Judaism is at my bar mitzvah, when I was thinking about the idea of why all of my friends and family came to uh, my bar mitzvah, and I was thinking about that question for a while, and I realized that they didn't come for the food or the party or the laning or really anything else besides the reason that they just want to, to support me um, because really being Jewish is connecting with your fellow Jew and being a part of a community and that really helps me connect with Judaism in my own way and I hope that it will continue to help me connect with Judaism forever. I'm looking forward to going to Israel in December for many reasons. I'm going to eat a lot of good food and visit a bunch of people who I'm going to miss. I've been to Israel twice, but I don't remember either of them. I'll appreciate this trip more since I'm older and I'll remember it. This makes me feel connected to Judaism more than I ever have. So one of my favorite things about Judaism is the Friday night meal. Like That's how I feel connected to everyone, to all the Jews around the world, because I know that everyone's doing this and you know it's like it's such a relaxing thing to just get to sit down with your family and talk about the week and no one's rushing anywhere everyone's really relaxed and I feel connected to Judaism through this because thousands of generations before me people have done the same thing they they sit down to a Friday night meal and thousands of generations after me will be doing the same thing and like I feel like a link in that chain so when I think of Judaism I think of that one meal every week it's so relaxing. It just it just lets you relax and be calm and yeah. My dad is a captain of the United States Navy. When I visited the Naval Academy with my family, I saw the recently built beautiful synagogue. It's the first time that the Jewish people working for the Navy will be able to pray without needing to leave the academy. The shul is named after Commodore Yuri F. P. Levy, a heroic Jewish man that fought not only in the War of 1812, but he also fought for his Judaism. He had to deal with anti-Semitism all around him and is a great role model for Jews for Jews in the U.S. military today. While Israel will always be the Jewish homeland, seeing the synagogue made me thankful to live in the United States where Jews have religious freedom. So the first time I felt connected to Judaism, I would say, is when I moved to Maryland and got a little older, because I came from a very small community, and since I was very young, I was a little isolated from everything. Like, you know, like there's like B'nai Kiva, kind of, a small show, there wasn't a lot of people, so I was like, oh, this is what being Jewish is, yay. But then I moved to Maryland, and it was a really big community, and there was like a huge B'nai Kiva program, and there was camps that I got more interested into. So I really and I had an experience to go on a lot more trips, because I lived a lot closer to 
places. And it was just, and the Israel Day Parade we went on, so it was just a lot of opportunity to connect with everyone, see how many people are actually like, like doing the same things I do, keeping Shabbos, keeping kosher. And it's just really amazing to see I'm the only one. Hi, my name is Eitan, and um, when I feel most connected to Judaism is on Friday night, because it brings my entire family together. And when my, fa my father says, I'm Aisha Kyle to my mom, she always loves it because she gets her song of the week on Shabbos on Friday night. And she always sings it with him because that's her song of the, the week. So that's why it brings my family together. And then I always like Friday night because um, when my father does Kiddush, she always does it in like a funny accent. So it like makes me laugh and, and it makes my entire family laugh. And it brings our entire family together. The past years, I learned in my secular class in MGBHA and non-secular that Judaism is a connection between the whole nation, not just one person. And when I went to Israel, I, I took all my things that I learned throughout the years and uh, realized that it was all true and that what made me really believe in Judaism and the religion. I was born, right. my father decided to name me Ezra after my grandfather. I grew up knowing this, so you're not really processing it, that I'm named after one of the most kindest, compassionate, and most intelligent m men I've ever known. I also realized that I would carry on the last name of Dianim, a name f with a rich cultural background and heritage. I realize now that I must live up to the expectations of being my grandfather's grandson. I must live up to the exotic traditions of our family, fulfill them and, keep and continue them on to my children, and also to live up to the compassion, the kindness, the overall greatness of my grandfather. It, that earned me his respectful admirers. I'm as a Troy, and I felt connected to Judaism through helping other people out. Many people, my many J people in my family have helped out Jews. For example, my great grandfather Baruch. Most of his family perished in the Holocaust, but he managed to escape. And after the Holocaust, he was able to track down two of his brothers and two of his nephews and bring them back to Israel and help support them until they got back onto their feet. His great granddaughters wife, uh, his great granddaughter, his great granddaughter's husband, my father, worked in government and helped many Jews out that way. Th this relates to the concept of, that we learned in Jewish history of Gerber Toshav about how Jews should help other Jews out. I am first generation American in my family and it gives me um, the chance to make a legacy for my family and it shows me that I should understand the importance of family, I should have good mido, and I should learn good morals. I'm Henry Wagner, and this is how I connect to Jewish history. My father's parents got left Germany in the Holocaust via, via the Canada transport, met in England, wed, and born, born my father. And in my, on my mother's side, my fa mother's father, after leaving, after dropping out of yeshiva, came to this well, flying World War II for the Soviet Union. Uh, uh, and after I, I once he came to America with a tailoring skill, he met my grand, my softa, and and formed my mom, who who went to the Hebrew Academy in the class of eighty four. Hey, my name is Karim Aganzo. I came to America two years ago, and it was hard to be a Jew in Chile because there's a lot of anti-Semitism and people would get screamed at. So, but now that I came to America, I'm very grateful and proud to be a Jew. And sometimes I miss my home in Chile, but it's good. This past summer, we went to, to Israel for my bar mitzvah. A week before we went, Ben Gurion Airport was closed because a rocket landed about a mile away, but that didn't stop us from going. While there, I felt safer than in my home in America because I knew I was with all the Jews and with my family and friends who decided to join. Uh, being there during this emotional time, I, it, I felt more connected to Judaism than I ever have before. Hi, I'm Joseph Feld, and during the New York trip, I was really reminded of the unity we have as a people. And th we see this throughout all of Jewish history, that the, that the Jewish people always united together. And so one of the examples of this is when Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai took many Jews to Yavne to go and keep Judaism alive. 
And so together as a people, we can all go on the long bus ride of life together. My name is Lily and I want to share with you my experience. When I was writing my research paper on modern day anti-Semitism in Europe, it made me realize how hard it is for the Jews living there. When I was in Greece a few years ago for Shabbat, I realized how the Jews have to be covert about their religion. When we were walking on the street with other Jewish people, no one wore their kippot in public. A lot of the Jews are leaving and there's barely enough for a minion. It made me realize how lucky I am to be able to practice my religion freely in America. Hi, my name is Kira and I'd like to share with you my experience at the Israeli parade. I was able to participate in the parade with 40,000 other Jews and many more in the stands. It was nice for me to see that how many Jews came together to support Israel. Hi, my name is Eliana and I'd like to share with you a recent experience I had in Israel. While I was in Israel, I passed the bus stop where the three boys were kidnapped. I remembered how everyone unified in praying for the three boys. It made me realize how special it was as a nation that unifies in hard times. Hi, my name is Leora Kelsey, and the moment that inspired me was when my fourth grade teacher came down with brain cancer. At first, he had been acting a little strange, but I just took it out that he was joking around and was totally normal. My other classmates, though, made comments about his how it's strange and how he wasn't normal. I didn't take any heed to him until he suddenly vanished and was replaced by my former he, my former Judaic teacher, Rabbi Brody. It turned out we once we found out that he had brain cancer, we all dabbed extra hard and added into special to him to, for the sake of him getting better. Unfortunately, he died, but it doesn't stop me now. For whenever I need an extra push during dabbing or to dabbing for someone else who is sick to use that memory of the all that kavana and push myself and push myself and use that kavana to pray for them. For my Rosh Mitzvah, I went with my family to Israel and I was happy that I had the opportunity to go there and be able to connect to Hashem and his holy land. Hi, I'm Max Crunch. And the first time I ever felt like I was really part of a Jewish community was when I was at my camp, Shoresh. Before, before I went to that camp, I never really felt like I was part of a larger Jewish community that was bigger than myself. When I, when I was at camp, me and a large group of people were sitting around and singing songs about our camp and about learning Torah. And that was the first time I really ever felt connected to a larger Jewish community. It was a really memorable trip because everybody in Israel is biyachad as one. The culture there is just so amazing, and because of this trip, I feel extremely connected to my homeland, Israel. I'd also like to dedicate this video to all the Chayalim who protect our country every day, because without them, there would be no Israel. And make Aliyah, everybody! My Friday nights are very inspiring. Once my mom lights the Shabbos candles, we all, me and her, go and say La Parsha. After, we go to my grandparents' house and talk for like an hour until the rest of my family comes, and then we go back to my house and have dinner. After the middle of dinner, my brother takes out his Gemara and goes for like an hour, so then I leave. And then we come, he come, I come back to the table, and his friend usually comes for a second dinner, and we all crack up about the randomest things, and we all go over what we learned in Judaic class that week. And we still laugh. What I love about Shabbos is how my family can bond over Torah, which is special because my new family cannot. Swim. Three, two, one, go. Hello, my name is Mishulam Unger, and my four names, Mishulam Zeev, Yosef Navon, are really connect me with my Jewish past. Mishulam is my grandfather's name, and my other names um, connect me and were given to me by my parents. Throughout my 14 years of being a Jewish girl and teenager, um, seven of them, I was, I've been able to attend Camp Young Judea in Texas. Um, the best part and most insp inspirational part of it is that on Shabbat, everybody dresses up in white, whether you're from America or Israel or from Mexico. Um, anyone is wearing white, and when you walk out of the cabin, you're just blinded by all the white. And it really makes, I it really being enhances by the Shabbat experience I think that because it just brings the whole camp and makes us in look like an amazing community. With other and Jewish I'm really people. thankful for that. You feel that. like you all know each other and that you belong with them. The Jewish nation is one big family and that is where I belong. This 
summer, my brother is making Aliyah and he will be going into the army. This makes me feel close to the state of Israel because my brother will be living there. And it teaches us that each Jew, no matter where you live, has a responsibility to protect the state of Israel. And we all have to move there in order for us to survive as a nation. This summer, I went to camp for the second year in a row. During the time that I was in camp, there was wars going on in Israel. We, my camp happens to be very Zionistic, so we talked a lot about like all these wars and how we can, what can we do to help, and we FaceTimed with different soldiers, and we heard all these moving stories, but one of the things that really spoke to me was when one morning we all woke up early to say Shema with the rest of the world, meaning that there was a time that like at the same time in every country, somebody was saying Shema for Israel and its army and the Tzava and just overall the people in Israel and so that Hashem uh, restates safety in our country. And so we all said Shema, and Shema is something that I say every morning, but that morning really felt different to me. It felt like this is something that speaks to our nation. This is something that our religion like is all saying at once so that we're all fighting for the same thing. And it meant a lot. It made me feel like I'm part of something bigger than this. And yeah, so... Hi, my name is Nisa, and I was named after my aunt, um, who died 15 years before I was born. I've always been told that I have some of her like personality and stuff like that, but I've always felt like I've lived under her shadow, like in her shadows. And I feel like I want to have my own voice, other than being just known as Nisa, whose aunt I was named after, who uh, my aunt. Um, I. Um, this year, I joined an international choir um, named Hazamir, and basically it's a youth movement and a choir all in one, and every year we um, get together in New York City, and all 350 of us from 26 cities and Israel, America and Israel, and we perform in Lincoln Center, which is the biggest concert hall in America, and it's a lot of fun. Not only, there's this one song that we sing every year, which is called Yachad Namod, and not only is this like the most beautiful song I've ever heard in my life, but it's also the song that made me want to make Aliyah and go into the army. And so this year I actually got to sing the first solo in that song, and it made me feel so good because I get to, not only my my aunt's niece, and I'm named after her, and I have her kind of personality and stuff like that, but I also get to have my own voice and protect my country as well. My name is Orna Eisenstadt, and the moment I felt most connected is when I went to Israel this past Passover for the first time. Right when my airplane landed in Israel, I felt very connected because I was able to be Jewish and no one would judge me, and I was able to be what I wanted to be. Um, my, the highlight of my trip was when I went to the Kotel for the first time. It was very inspirational because that is what I've been learning about my whole life, and I was able to dab in there, and I was, I was actually at the moment I felt <laughs> Before going to Israel, I knew it existed, I understood its culture, I knew all about the country, but I still felt like I didn't completely understand Israel. When I got to go to Israel for the first time for my bar mitzvah, my first thought after getting off the plane was, oh my God, I'm actually in Israel. After all the stories, songs, and pictures that I've heard about and seen about in Israel, I was finally there. As we were touring the next two weeks, every site I visited I'd heard about before, but now I had the experience of actually being there. I was at the place where famous events had happened thousands of years before. Also, you can listen to what the culture is about, but you can never actually understand it until you have truly experienced it. For example, everybody knows that Israeli drivers are crazy, but you don't truly understand it until you were on the sidewalk and you were almost hit by a bus like me. That, when you have had this experience, that was when you truly have connected to Judaism in Israel. My name is Renan, and a moment from Jewish history that I learned uh, that uh, compares to modern day is uh, how the Jews are always like assimilate and they feel comfortable, and then they're like kicked out or and per and persecuted, like in Spain or England, and so this uh, like it's so bad that they're they're persecuted and everything. But like, and there, and there's one, there's like one good thing out of it. So people move and they move to like Israel or make Aliyah or move to a safer community and grow Jewish communities in different places. So like, and you could always and like today in France, uh, the people are being persecuted, 
and so like they had, like they're facing major anti-Semitism, and there's not many Jews left there. So they they move out, and like they move to Israel or like America, and make bigger communities. And so there's always like one good thing in the bad. Um. I'm moving to Israel this summer, and when I found out about that, I was really happy and stuff, but I was a little bit nervous because of everything that went over in the summer, like the three boys and the rockets and everything. But then I realized that no matter how much rockets or capturing or whatever, it really brought like the whole world of Judaism together, and that was very inspiring, and that Hashem always has our back and is always going to protect us, even if some people decide it would be fun to destroy areas and kill people it's not that fun and we're still gonna like be okay like the tunnel that they found the three boys led to finding so there was like no massacre of the entire israel so i guess it was like a bad thing that came out as a good thing and i know that i'm gonna be safe even though it could be dangerous at times my name is renee fuller um one particular memory that i have connecting to judaism is when my family hosted the pesach seder two separate years we sat on the floor in the living room with a cloth wrapped around, and it was as if we were sitting in a tent in the desert. And then we walked through the hallway, which was covered with blue sheets, like it was the splitting of the sea. And this um, connected me to the past of Judaism, and it was as if we were with our ancestors in the desert. Charlie Hertzfeld, the first time I truly felt connected to my Jewish heritage was when I put on tefillin. Uh, I'm one of the youngest in my class, so uh, all my friends have been wearing tefillin for months, and I was really excited to put it on for the first time. When I put it on, I felt connected to, to everyone in the room, and I also felt connected to my Jewish ancestors, my parents, my grandparents, and I felt like I was part of a community. Now whenever I go on a trip or to different communities, I still feel connected to them because we're all wearing tefillin and we're part of a group. When my uncle was younger, he and his family walked across France to escape the Holocaust, eventually making their way to the United States. The person I was told about, he died six months after I was born, was extremely kind, but he was always careful not to waste anything because of the times he didn't have food during his journey. My father, served for 20 years in the United States Navy, which caused him to have some very interesting experiences because of his being Jewish. He led a Pesach Seder on an aircraft carrier and had one man sukkah in the middle of an Air Force base in Alabama. As the daughter and granddaughter of these two people, I have to make my part in the chain of Jewish history special. And my name is Sam. And um, the, the time I felt most connected to, to Judaism was when I went to Israel for Sukkot two years ago, and I went to the Kotel Friday, Friday night, and I saw a whole variety of different types of Jews. Um, some were Haredi, some were Reform, but they were all together in the same place, all davening to Hashem. I realized that even though sometimes um, many Jews fight over who's right, over halacha, that really we're all part of the same nation, we're all brothers. Hi, I'm Samantha. And something that really connects to me about Judaism is Friday night Shabbos dinner because you're able to take a break from your normal day lives and you're all, the whole family's together and it's all very spiritual and you don't have to worry about homework or your job or anything and the whole family can just connect in a very nice way. Last summer I went to Israel with my family for five weeks after my bar mitzvah. There was a lot of people who decided not to go to Israel because of the war that was happening. But my family decided to go because we should not let the people from Gaza who were shooting rockets stop us from going to Israel and visiting the country. So we should learn not not back down from them and show them that we're not going to let them bother us. Hi, I'm Sarah, and one thing I feel really connected to is that I'm able to be able to go to a Jewish school. And my parents, they're from Russia, and they had to go to a really like a harsher school, and it just wasn't as good of an environment, and they couldn't keep Shabbos and they couldn't like do a lot of Jewish things so I just feel really fortunate in that I'm able to go here and have all these wonderful people and just have Judaism be such a positive thing and um, a lot of a big part of Judaism is Masora and I feel like they passed down all that opportunity to me and gave me the ability to be able to do mitzvot and everything. Hi my name is Shifra Fersberg. I often feel very connected to Judaism when I think of my great grandma Ethel. 
and I was led always to go to her house every year for Thanksgiving. When we arrived, she would welcome us through the door and dance with us. She would talk to us like we were the best thing that had ever happened to her. Only after she passed away did I learn that she had been almost completely blind. I would have never known. Because she made the best of it and did what she could with what she had, you would never have guessed. She passed on her legacy of always having a house mess out or fiends and, do, and talking to you are really nice today and being really nice. I hope to pass on the same legacy to my children. My name is Shimon Graf. I believe that being Jewish is a wonderful thing. I, I think it's because I feel a great connection to Judaism. I think this attitude is because my parents have fulfilled the requirement of the Pasuk Razir. That means that one should remember and reflect on their history and learn about it and not to make fun of it. If we have doubts, we should ask our parents and not assume negatively about our religion, our life mission. This clearly is the right attitude that all, after all that our ancestors went through to give us this life. Hi, my name is Shlomit Bernstein. The moment that I felt most connected to my Jewish heritage was when I went to sleep away camp in Israel, where I go every year, but I see my, all the Jewish people around me, and I noticed that we're the Jewish future and that we need to make sure to preserve the land of Israel. Then when I went to the Israel Day Parade and I saw everybody who supported, it made me really want to start right now. When I think about being Jewish, I think of a lot of things. But the first thing that pops in my head is Israel. Last year I went to Israel for the first time. And after a long plane ride, uh, I was tired, but when I got there, I just felt like I was at home. As soon as I landed, I went straight to the hotel. It was midnight, but you know what? I woke up. And you know, when I got there in Davin, you know, I just felt inspired. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and the first time I felt connected to Judaism was the first time that I went to Israel. When I stepped off the plane and I looked around me, I saw that there were a lot of other Jewish people there, and it made me feel like I was a part of a bigger community and really connected. About a year and a half ago, I started doing groups in my show Young Israel of Potomac. I started by teaching the children Parsha. When I noticed that the light went off in their head and that they got what I was teaching them, it inspired me by teaching, by being able to teach other people Judaism, that I was bringing on the culture to them. My name is Gail. I used to live in Israel. Every time I go back to visit, I feel most connected to Israel because I feel it is the home of the Jewish people. I feel that it is where everyone protects each other and everybody comes together and unites. And I feel most secure there, and I feel that is my... Hi, my name is Yogi Garfield, and when I felt most connected to Judaism is my bar mitzvah. Um, my bar mitzvah was in Israel at the Kotel, and it was the first time I put on my tefillin, and it was very inspirational, and I felt connected to Judaism. And it was the first time, and then I had an aliyah from the Torah. Hi, my name is Yoni Albert, and my favorite holiday throughout the years that connects me to Judaism the most is Sukkot. Sukkot makes me feel the most connected to my Judaism because everyone comes together to sit in the Sukkah and shake the Luach together. I love saying the Sukkah just like B'nai Israel sat in the hot sun in the desert for seven days where they ate and drank uh, together. I love shaking the Luach where each part of the Luach and Etro has its own uh, significance and meaning. I feel that I am the... Uh, I feel that I'm the modern day link on the Jewish history timeline because... Um, no, I just feel that in the modern day link on Jewish history timeline, but I also feel I'm the future because so much has happened throughout the years to help keep Judaism alive. Hi, my name is Yoni Snow. The moment when I felt the, the strongest connection to my heritage in Israel was when last summer when I went to the Kotel and I celebrated my family, my bar mitzvah, and I felt it was really powerful and inspiring to be with at the most holy place. Uh, with people. Zach Wolf, and one of the first times I was inspired by Judaism was at my bar mitzvah. I looked around at the room and I saw all the guests who came in from out of town. It made, it made me inspired because I learned that all Jews have to be, work together and be together in order to survive and stay alive throughout all the hard times and all the good times.